Good morning, Mr. Proturis. Good morning, everybody. Morning, Chair. Are you ready? Yes, we are, Chair. Um, the Minister Ashobo is present uh, by virtual by video. connection. Yes. And uh, his legal representatives are present. Perhaps they should place themselves on record. Yes, let's do that first. You can do it from where you are if your mic is working. Good morning, Chair. Good morning. Um, as previously stated, my name is Lesson Peter Adonis. I'm from Skinia Tennis. Uh, you lowered your voice as you oh. said your name, so uh, just uh, so Lesson Peter Adonis, a practicing attorney at Skinia Tennis, and um, I'm representing the witness, Mr. Mashobo. Thank you. Okay, good morning, Mr. Mashobo. Your Excellency Chair and Deputy Chief Justice, morning, and Thank to you. the colleagues there. Good, good morning, good morning. Thank you for making yourself available to assist the Commission. Um, yes, Mr. Pretorius. Uh, Thank you, Chair. Mm. May the oath be administered. Yes, I don't know whether there is a delayed transmission of the voice. Mr. Maklobok, uh, are you experiencing any problems with uh, hearing us? No, I can hear you well, Babumti. Oh, okay, all right. Thank you. Uh, please administer the oath of affirmation. Please state your full names for the record. My name is Mbangseni David Masavo. Do you have any objection to taking the prescribed oath? No objections. Do you consider the oath binding on your conscience? Definitely. Do you solemnly swear that the evidence you will give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, please raise your right hand and say so. Help me, God. So help me, God. Uh, thank you. Um, the, I hope the transmitters have got the spelling for the first name right. Uh, Mr. Mashlobo, do you want to spell um, Bangeseni for the benefit of the uh, transcribers? <laughs> It's M B A N G I S E N I. Thank you. Yes, um, Mr. Pretorius. Um, Mr. Mashlobo, you have before you, and you will be assisted through the documentation by one of the commission investigators, uh, your own affidavit, which appears in bundle SSA2 at page 737. It's exhibit YY13 in divider 3. Uh, hey, um, Mr. Well, I'm, I'm OK. You, 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 you can proceed, because I, I, uh, I do have my copy of my affidavit. Yes, I yes. Mr. Pretorius. Yes. Uh, there is a bundle, SSA bundle one, which has got exhibit YY one, and then there is a SSA bundle two. Um, I think it's bundle two that. Uh, in, in which we find Mr. Maklobo's uh, affidavit, is yes, that right? Yes. In okay. that affidavit, it will be part of Exhibit YY13. Yes. Yeah. Okay. If you would go, please, uh, Mr. Maklobo, to page 737 of SSA02. Uh, seven five three. 
737. 737. Is there an investigator of the Commission with you? Sir? Yes, they are here. They are around. All right. Well, they should assist you then, please, in putting that document before you. You have it before you? No, I do have it. You do have it. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't hear that. Yes, he says he does have it. No, he does have it. Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, do you recognize the document at page 737? Is that your affidavit? That document was filed by my attorneys. Yes, and if you go to through the Secretariat of uh, the State Capture Commission. Yes, do you go, if you go to page 758, is that your signature there? That is the signature above the word deponent. The, the signature there is my signature. Yes, and are you satisfied That's my that as far as you are concerned, the contents of this affidavit are true and correct? Yes, 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 Chair. You have before you three files, uh, Mr. McRobo. The one file we have just referred to is Exhibit YY2 or Bundle YY2. You also have, and you will be shown excerpts from that file in due course, not the whole file, Exhibit YY1. And then there is a third folder um, which forms part of Exhibit YY13 and will be incorporated into the bundle in due course of additional redacted affidavits and transcripts. We will deal with those piecemeal in due course. I do. Now, a matter we should clear up um, at the outset uh, is there any classified material in your affidavit? And I refer in particular to certain passages dealing with operational directives, paragraphs 19.1 and 19.2. I, I raise this just... There is no matter that is classified. All right. So those operational directives in paragraph 19.1 and 19.2 are not classified. We may refer to them and in due course put them those on the website. Those paragraphs are not classified because, because they, they don't give you uh, the, the actual contents a uh, uh, that uh, you will find in the directives. Remember the law, you can't publish them in a gazette. All right. Well, you've placed them in the affidavit. Your evidence is they're not classified. Nevertheless, we will take the precaution of checking that further before anything is put up on the public web website. But for the moment, um, our understanding is that you may testify to those issues and we'll get there in due course. Before we get to the content of your affidavit, um, just to place your own position in its context, uh, I understand that between 2005 and 2008, Minister Castrols was the Minister of State Security. Is that uh, what you recollect? Well, uh, I, I don't. I don't understand. If you say I must put it in my own context, is there going to be an opportunity uh, through you, Chair, mm -hmm. where one would be able to make some few remarks, and then uh, so that we can deal with the issues that. Uh, were part of the summons that were issued to me through your office. 
Um, well, one, uh, if you have a written statement that you would like to read out before uh, we proceed with your evidence, uh, I would need to see it first to see whether it doesn't implicate anybody who would complain that uh, uh, somebody gave evidence about them that implicates them without a Rule 33 notices being given to them. If, um, if uh, so I won't allow it until I've seen it, you know. Um, so so it, if I, I know that I've not been given, at least I'm not aware that I've been given anything. So it may be that uh, if you have it, it's something that I can look at during the break and at some stage before you end your evidence, uh, you might then get that opportunity. If you don't have a statement that you want to read out but you have remarks to make, uh, it becomes more of a challenge because we don't know what you are going to say until you say it. <laughs> Uh, but I see you seem to have some document. Do you have a statement that you wanted to read? Well, uh, Your Excellency Chair, I want to make short remarks and um, we will find a way to transmit them. Yeah. But I assure you, yeah. because I've taken an oath, Yeah. not only this oath, Yes. And um, I'm very sensitive to matters of intelligence. Yes. I will not mention people's names. Yes. Okay. But it's a short remark. It's a, yes. But you, but you say it is and in the form of a document. Be, we, you say it is in the form of a document. Yes. Uh, I have a small two-page document. Okay. Uh, but not, not this thing that I'm going to say that they are outside some of the opening remarks on my affidavit. But I wanted to play something just for your... Yeah. Okay. Uh, if, 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 without if, wasting time, because I know the commission is running out of time. Yes. I, I can assure you, I will the, not divulge any information any name, uh, any information that can reveal a name of any person, yeah, or a body or an organization, yeah, that the law doesn't. Okay, uh, if you are not, I'm going, very confident. If you are not going to uh, mention anybody's name or organization or entity uh, in. Uh, by way of implicating them. Uh, Mr. Pretorius, what's your attitude? I think I could allow it if he gives me that assurance. I'm not sure what uh, the minister wants to say, so I would not be able to. Um, <laughs> if, if, it's, if it's a matter of controversy, yeah. um, then uh, whether names are given or not is not an issue. If it requires an answer, Mm. We would prefer to see it in writing so that we yeah, can prepare just to proper, be sure. Yeah. proper answer. Yeah. Mr. Matlobo, I see there's no signal. Chairperson, yes. With, uh, I can hear you, Chair. Oh, you can hear me. Can you listen? I, I don't want us to take. I can hear you said, I don't want us to take long. Yeah. I've made an undertaking mm. and I'm not going to break the undertaking. Mm. And if I break any undertaking, mm. we are empowered to call me into order, Babunti. Mm. So, but you say, you are sure me. It's a, it's you, a small. You won't implicate a, anybody and you won't mention anybody's name or entity. Is that correct? I will definitely, not, definitely, I will not do that. Okay. Do you need two minutes, three minutes? How much do you need? Five minutes. Give me three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. I will allow you. Thank, three thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Yeah. Chair. Okay. Mm. 
We, we don't see well, you uh, at the moment. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Your Excellency, uh, mm -hmm. Chairperson. Mm -hmm. Pardon? Uh, I'm saying we don't have your picture on the screen at, proceed, at the moment, but if you can proceed, it's fine. Oh you, oh, you don't appear in one screen, but you appear in another one. You can oh. proceed, yeah. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, and uh, to Mr. Pretorius and the other colleagues from the Commission. Firstly, we just want to, to thank you, including my legal team, uh, to thank you that uh, we have invited us here to come and assist the Commission. Uh, and uh, because one has a responsibility to do so. so. But it's going to be important that before we go to certain issue, mission, is the creation by the, the, the decision of my movement, which is the ANC, it is of us, irrespective of the positions rated by the president, we are going to cooperate with your commission. Well, Chairperson, there are certain difficulties that um, I will indicate through Mr. Pretorius when we engage some of the challenges we experience uh, uh, about um, uh, administrative challenges in the commission when it came to issues that we needed to come to deal with here. But I want to indicate that um, I've made the time, I even could see that even in the information submitted here today, there is even information that is not even on the Rule 3.3 notices, but uh, it may, it, it may, it, in, in as much as it might be that particular case, I will not be in a position to shy away from responding to these issues. On record, I need to indicate that, Chair, um, I've looked at all the documents that are given, and I want to indicate that um, I will try to help as much as possible especially because as a person who was a, a, a member of the executive, national executive, I took an oath. And there are certain issues that uh, I'll be able to divulge to the commission to the best of my ability. There will also be certain limitations, Chair, where matters will seem to be able to indirectly or directly want me to divulge secrets that are entrusted to me. I'm very conscious of that, Chair, because I had an opportunity to be assisted while I was in the employ to be properly trained on matters of uh, intelligence. And I was very fortunate that I've gone to Europe, Asia, including in Africa. I have a fair idea on how intelligence operates so that by my own a, 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 a appearance here, I should not actually compromise the work of the commission, but also unintentionally uh, break the law, but at the very same time, also ensuring that the tenets of the law around issues of national security and national intelligence are protected. These are the issues, Chair, that even an appearance of a person like me today will not only throw interest here at home, but will also even throw an interest abroad. Despite some of the issues that uh, my legal team have raised with your team, but I'm saying I'm here to account to the best of my ability to have my full support. But if there are issues that I'm uncomfortable with during the course of the engagement, I will request your indulgence to indicate so, so that we are within the parameters on how intelligence works and how the laws of the country, but without trying to hide matters that borders to criminality. Those are the ways that I wanted to, to convey your excellency, uh, Chair, to be on record. And I hope I've managed to keep my promise not to divulge any names or bodies or institutions or methodology that can compromise matters of national security. 
Thank you very much, uh, Babumti. Uh, no, thank you very much, Mr. Maslobo. We, you certainly kept your promise in that regard. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I just want to uh, assure you that uh, the Commission also appreciates the sensitivity of matters relating to uh, intelligence and that as the Commission hears evidence, it is alive to uh, the intricacies of intelligence. Um, obviously, the Commission will also not want uh, to be in breach of any law itself, nor, it w nor will it want any witness to be in breach of, of the law. And um, uh, certainly um, uh, matters of criminality should not be uh, swept under the carpet, uh, so that, that, that's quite important. But I also want to mention to you, because you did say that uh, you noticed that there are some documents that might not have been included in the Rule 33 notice to you uh, that um, you may be asked about, and you indicated that you would do your best to assist and deal with them. I just want to assure you that uh, uh, the Commission remains very committed to fairness to everybody, and uh, we, we will keep on trying to make sure that um, there is fairness to, to you as well. Where there are serious challenges, uh, articulate them, we will look at them, and uh, where decisions need to be taken, they will be taken. But uh, certainly, uh, there is no intention to ambush you or to ambush any witness. Uh, so there will be an attempt to try and make sure that, that there is no unfairness to you. Where it's necessary that you get more time in order to deal with certain issues, that can be explored within the constraints of the uh, commission in terms of time. But uh, th thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Pretorius. Chair, sorry. Um, yes. I just um, can I just take this opportunity to, to to clear something out on on some grammatical errors, yes. uh, which I had hoped my client would address when he was addressing yeah. uh, or making his opening remarks. Mm -hmm. uh, I know an affidavit would have to be amended by a supplementary. Yes. However, um, we have noted that because of the limited time with, that we had to compile yeah. this affidavit, that yes. there were some grammatical errors. Okay. And there, there were also some incorrect mentioning of a name in yeah. particular of a witness that has given a Rule 33 notice. Oh. And uh, there has been an accepted pseudonym yeah. for, for record. Yes. May I uh, also, with the permission and intelligence of my colleague, direct you to page 50. Sorry, sorry. Uh, um, paragraph 50 of the affidavit on YY13, which is the affidavit uh, that has already been placed on record. Paragraph 15. Paragraph 50. Five zero yes. of Mr. Masrobo's affidavit. That's correct. Yeah. So you'll note that there are names uh, relating to three three notices in there. Oh, uh, those names should not have been mentioned. Is that right? No, these are pseudo names. Some of them. Oh, they some are, are these are pseudo names. Some are indeed the name of a. I think just one or two. They are the name, the real names of the witnesses, and they, these are not um, protected witnesses if one has to use that. But a incorrect name of a student name. Yeah. Originally, it was a, in the treatment notice used as Cheryl. Yeah. However, through the proceedings that of yesterday, it was accepted that Cheryl should be replaced 
with Dor Dorit Dorothy. So, so that my old my client can also note that. Because he was not made aware of this in particular. So it is that chair that I wanted to really bring, other than the grammatical errors that will be yeah. progressively amended uh, with your permission to the witness himself. Okay, no, that's fine. No, thank you. And, and yes, chair. I, otherwise, I don't want to really bother the chair and with the with time constraints. With small the, things, yeah. Yeah, with the other administrative issues Minor that things, we have yeah. had. Okay, no, that's fine. Thank you, chair. Chair, um, with your permission. Yes. Chair, we represent uh, Dorothy. Yes. And we do note the submission, mm -hmm. and we accept same to proceed accordingly. Okay, all right. All right. Uh, do you want just to place yourself on record? You might have done so previously, but yes, you chair. Can maybe do so again. Chair uh, is Advocate yeah. Vumbi. Mm -hmm. I'm on instruction on brief from mm -hmm. PG Mateka, attorneys. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Pretorius, I wonder whether uh, maybe during the break, uh, there should be a reduction or something on this paragraph? Or, or, we will do so, uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just concerned as, that as long as it remains here, you know, one is not comfortable. Sure, yeah. we will do that. Thank you. Okay, all right. Um, uh, you had already... Uh, Mr. Pretorius, uh, confer, got Mr. Mashaba to confirm that this is his affidavit. You're, who, who, are you asking me to admit it as an exhibit? His affidavit. Uh, he's done so, Chair. Hmm? Um, we, we didn't admit it as an exhibit as yet. Did you want me to admit it as an exhibit? Uh, yes, please, Chair. Uh, what exhibit should it be? It's exhibit YY13. Why, why, 18? At pages 737. Yeah. But of SSA 2 and following. Yes. The affidavit of Mbangiseni David Mashobo, which starts at page 737 of um, uh, SSA bundle 2, will be admitted as uh, an exhibit and will be marked as exhibit YY18. Okay, all right. Um, perhaps, may I proceed, Chair? Perhaps, uh, Mr. Mitchell, we can go back to the timeline and just by way of introduction to this uh, uh, series of questions, I can just explain to the Chair and to yourself that uh, your ministry took place in the context of a series of events that not only preceded but followed your occupancy of the Ministry of State Security. And in order to understand the context of the evidence that you will give and the time during which uh, you occupied the ministry, uh, it's necessary to put this uh, timeline on record. So if you would just bear with uh, us for the moment. Um, 2005 to 2008, Minister Kastrels was the Minister of State Security. You recall that? I recall. Then from 2000... I'm sorry, had you finished? Minister, but I will not, but I know that you have been meeting with the particular one. One second, Mr. Pretorius. Uh, this screen here uh, for the technicians, is it uh, not possible to make sure it works? If somebody maybe could... Uh, attend to it if they can attend to it without us adjourning.
Yes, and the sound um, from the remote facility is not ideal mm. as well, so it may be necessary yes. to ask Mr. Mashlobo to repeat some answers. Yes, uh, also the technicians could look at the sound. Perhaps we could clear that up um, in the mm. next five minutes if we're yes. granted a short adjournment. It yes. will save time in the long run, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, we'll take a short adjournment to give uh, the technicians time to deal with these matters. We hope five minutes will be enough. We adjourn. <laughs> Hearings. Signal still bad, guys. We have changed the other Wi-Fi network. Still the same We're on the MTN now. We've changed all the networks. Okay. We've changed all the networks. We're trying. We're trying MTN. That's why I jam in. Can you hear us clearly? Okay. Now? Is it better? Uh, I can hear you. It's just the video looks like it's choppy as well. Camera one. Camera one, zoom into the chairperson's chair. The modem, the modem, the modem needs to be in the center of the room or further away from the walls. It can't be near the walls. It, it is very, it, it's very close to the machine. 
next to the machine actually. Yeah. The machine.
Yes, Mr. Pires. Thank you, Chair. Um, we've attempted to improve uh, the signal. Mm -hmm. The screen is now operational. Mm -hmm. But I must say that it may be that during the course of evidence, the signal deteriorates again and we might have to make some other arrangement. Mm -hmm. But for the present, um, uh, Mr. Metrobo, can you hear me? Mr. Matlobo, can you hear us? Chairperson, I can hear you. But if Mr. Titorias can try to manage his uh, standing there, uh -huh. that uh, every time he needs to... Can, can, can you hear me, Chair? We can hear you. I, I'm, I'm making a request through you, Chair, mm -hmm. that Mr. Titorias needs to help me so that he doesn't get to be cut. Yes. He, that he tries to speak to the mic, even if he tries to refer to his notes, but he must not lose the mic, because when he loses the mic... I, I you can't hear him. Understood, Mr. Metrobo. I will do my best. Uh, I, I, no, 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 I was just saying it's a question of the art you know, of the, on the mic. He must not lose the mic. Yeah. No, no. Thank you, Chair. He, he will try, yeah. Okay, all right. all right. And if there's anything that is unclear in any question that I ask, please don't hesitate, Mr. Mishlobo, to ask me to repeat the question. Is that in order? I'll definitely do that, Mr. Pitoras. Thank you, Mr. Mishlobo. Um To continue the timeline then, between 2008 and 2014, Minister Kwele was the Minister of State Security. We've heard evidence uh, in relation to state security uh, that occurred during that period. And uh, I guess the time you give are correct. And then you occupied the position of Minister of State Security during the period 2014 to 2017. Is that correct? That's in accordance with your statement. Let's Let's put it accurately, from 25 May 2014 until to the 16th of October 2017. I'd want those dates to go on record, Chair. Yes. Uh, we'll get your affidavit where they are indeed on record in that detail. And then after your period of ministry, the position was occupied by Minister Bongo between 2017 and 2019. Is that correct? Uh, we have a message on screen that your internet connection is unstable. Did you hear the question? No, I, I couldn't hear the question. You said that the next minister after me was I know Minister that it Bongo. Was, it, 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 it was Mr. Bongani Bongo. Yes, 2017 to 2019. No, that's not correct. It can't be 2019. I think it was Ms. Lips at uh, in 2018, or if I'm not mistaken. Well, it just, just, get, just get the records correct. It should have been 2018, around February, because there was a, a, a cabinet a, a reshuffle that happened uh, on the 26th of February, 2018. All right. Thank you for that correction. Um, in any event, you were followed in the ministry by uh, Minister Bonga. Is that correct? We are correct, sir. Yes. And between 2005 and 2010, Mr. Arthur Fraser was the DDG of operations in the SSA. Am I correct in that regard, as far as you recall? Well, I never checked Chairperson. 
who was in the employ of the intelligence services before I got into office. All right. I will not go to that. And then uh, I can just put it to you for your comment if you wish. In January 2010, uh, our investigators tell us that Arthur Fraser resigned his position. Do you know of that? It will be presumptuous of me, Chair, to comment on a matter I don't have details. All right. And then in September, we'll come to the point of the questions in due course. But in September 2016, um, was he appointed by you as uh, Director General SSA? The law is very clear, Chairperson. Uh, in terms of the constitution and the intelligence law, the appointing authority in terms of the head of the service or the director general is by the president of the republic, who is the, who is the head of the national executive or the commander in chief in terms of law. All right. Um, may I rephrase it then? Whilst you were minister, of state security, Arthur Fraser was appointed as director general. Would that be more accurate as far as you're concerned? It will be partially correct. You need to, to add and say Arthur Fraser was appointed by His Excellency, the President of the Republic, as the Director General, that becomes complete statement. All right, thank you. Um, before you took office, and approximately from 2008 to 2010, there existed a principal agent network, often referred to as PAN-1. Were you aware of that fact when you took office? Except media reports that I can't uh, uh, speak about to them. All right. But whether through media reports or otherwise you were aware of the existence of the principal agent network, I'm aware, in terms of those media reports, of the allegations of the existence right. of that program. Well, we know, uh, and we are told by our investigators, that PAN-1 uh, was investigated internally within the State Security Agency, and a report was made to Minister Tlele approximately in November 2010, do you know of that? No, I only know when my, the time I became a minister, when I received a report from the Office of the Inspector General. All right. But uh, there is an indication that uh, there was a request by a former minister uh, to investigate the program in terms of the law, where the Inspector General must investigate any matter that is either referred to by His Excellency, the President of the Republic, or by the Minister, or by the Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence, or by, or by the public. Right. Um, our investigations also inform us that at least two persons were implicated in the report made to Minister Tlele um, in serious wrongdoing, and those two persons were Mr. Arthur Fraser and uh, Mr. Engel, E-N-G-E-L. Are you aware of those facts? Or were you aware of those facts when you took office? Mr. Pretorius, let me help you. Uh, I don't want to speculate. Uh, I don't have a cope.
I think he is frozen. I don't want to mislead the panel on a document that is not in front of me. Uh, you, you, you. But when you want to discuss, I'm sorry, Mr. Yes, Masobo. I'm sorry. While you were speaking, your picture froze, and I don't know whether when uh, it froze you were speaking, but we couldn't hear you, or whether you were not speaking. I think you might have to repeat uh, what you were saying. Uh, uh, I hope I'm not carrying the gemma's chair. <laughs> Well, I see that when I just ask you to repeat, the screen goes blank, Mr. Mashobo. So let's try again. Just say what you said again. Oh, so it. I'm saying to Mr. Victoria's chairperson, mm. you, you can hear me, Chair. Yes, we can hear you. Chairperson, I'm saying for your record, Chairperson, what uh, Mr. Pretorius is proposing, as in the report, I'm not uh, uh, in a position to say yes or no, because the, that report by the Inspector General is not in front of me as we speak right now. Yes. But I will be able to assist Mr. Pretorius because I could see to an assist <laughs> yes, I'll be able to speak at the time to say when when you receive the pen report, what did you do? That's where I will help Mr. Pretorius. But the other issues is on Zalela. I might not assist him that much because I don't want to mislead you and I don't want to mislead the country. But as I'm saying, I will not say was actually being said to have done a wrongdoing or not wrongdoing without uh, refreshing my mind. Remember, Chair, I left intelligence as a minister it's nearly four years ago now. Mm. Uh, well, but I will help you. Yes. Well, Mr. Maslobo, you are not the first uh, witness to uh, include uh, they are mother tongue while they are testifying in English. Uh, others have done so, <laughs> uh, but but it does create some challenges because we wo we don't have an interpreter at hand. So do do your best to make sure that I, you I, put I, it I'll, in I'll English. I'll from using my language. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think, Mr. Pretorius, for what it's worth, when Mr. Masobo referred to used isizulu to say we entlalela. I think that means you were laying a foundation for questions to come later. So Indeed, he, yes. he was saying he, he won't be able to assist you while you lay the foundation, but he will assist you when you ask him directly on certain issues later. Mr. Mashlobo, is that what you meant? You are absolutely correct, Chair. Okay, all right. All right. Well, let's move above ground level then immediately, uh, Mr. Mitlobo. When you took office, or before you took office, or after you took office, were you briefed on the PAN-1 report? Well, um, a Chairperson, uh, I'll be wary to use the word pen one, pen what, what, what. But uh, what I want to place it on record, in as much as I don't have the documents here right now, the minister in 2014, in 2014 or from the 25th of May, I was fortunate that my predecessor did a handover, in other words, to brief me of issues that I must also qualify the issues I needed to know. Remember, in intelligence, there are things you need to know, and there are things that uh, they will not give it to you because they are governed by uh, the rules of confidentiality or secrecy. The issue of pen was one of those that uh, was brought into my attention 
And I was fortunately that uh, the hey, this technology is really giving in us the office today. They were able to give me the records. I I can hear you, Chair. Can you hear me? Uh, we we can hear you, but uh, your picture froze uh, for a few seconds earlier, and we could not hear. I'll I'll repeat, I'll repeat what you say. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, where did you lose me? Did you capture the one about handover? Uh, we did, but I think Mr. Pretorius has a suggestion. Yes, well, um, one suggestion might be that we uh, persuade Minister Mishobo to attend the hearing in person. Um, mm -hmm. If that is possible, we will take mm -hmm. all the necessary steps. Yes. The other possibility is to ensure that the place from which Mr. Mishlobo gives evidence mm. has an adequate uh, internet connection mm. with the venue. Mm. Uh, I say so because the detail and the wording of questions and answers mm. may become mm. relevant. Mm. And one cannot uh, have a situation where mm. we don't hear an answer mm. or an answer is not properly on record mm. or the is some misunderstanding yeah. uh, in communications. It's very important that this evidence be accurately and thoroughly mm. recorded. Uh, are, are you not too far from where we are, Mr. Maslobo? Is there a chance that we could adjourn and you could come to the venue and give evidence in person in order to avoid these technical problems? I'm in Pretoria, Chair. Well, uh, from Pretoria to here should take about, what, an hour or so. Um, we would be prepared to adjourn and, uh, for that time because these technical problems are just uh, becoming more and more intolerable. Would that be fine with you? Uh, Chairperson, because I don't have another time to deal with these matters, including yours. Yes. So you help reasons, but uh, I don't want it to be an obstruction to your work. Um, you, you, you can. Uh, 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 the the guys that you have sent here from the from the team because. Uh, they are from the security services. Uh, let's be there. Oh, I must be careful. <laughs> you are not allowed to uh, break the law, Mr. McClover. Uh, <laughs> one uh, one to 12. Let, let's, I want to finish today. Yes, I'm yes. making time. For a yeah, so what, half past 11? Yeah, half past 11, let's resume. Oh, okay. No, that's fine. Um, okay, but, okay no, thank but you very much. Okay, thank you. You can get onto the road. That, that's fine. Okay. Oh, no, 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 Chair. There were two options provided, but I think... Seems like there's consensus with the witness to dinner <laughs> because the reason why he had to do the live feed was uh, through. But I had my colleagues saying there's precautions that will be taken. Yes. Um, I will not, leave, I'll I'll not give to... them my former convert. I'm clear in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> He's okay. speaking. So I think there's no e issue. There's no big issue. Because um, uh, otherwise, because I was th going to suggest of the second option of him relocating into his house closer to his probably route because that the the second option that uh, my colleague proposed oh uh, but it seems like i just went for the first yeah, one you, yeah. You, yeah but no. it, if, the, if if my client is comfortable with no he is he is, i think he is comfortable sure. um because we don't want to try another one and find that also is problematic exactly. so if he can come here straight away that that's much more helpful chair i'm Thank leaving you, chair. <laughs> oh, okay. Should I leave? Uh, 
Yes, but I think uh, you can get onto the road, Mr. Masobo. Uh, we will adjourn just now. Your, your, your council was just <laughs> mentioning, was talking about um, the other alternative, but we, I think we are agreed that the best thing is for you to get onto the road and be here at half past 11. It's no later than quarter to 12. Sorry? I, I should be there before quarter to 12. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Yeah, I'm being requested by my colleague, <laughs> Mr. Horadira, to ask your indulgence to address you. Uh, who, who is that? He will place himself. Chair, I did not place myself on the record because we didn't anticipate that we'd be heard today on any matter. Um, the name is Rapulian Horadira uh, from Horadira Rapadana and Horadira Muta Incorporated. Um, I represent Arthur Fraser. Graham Engel, and a number of people. And from the last question, it appears that some of my clients may be implicated. For the record, we did not receive any notice uh, with regards to today's proceedings. Um, and we just need to place that on record. And, and, and for that matter, uh, to the extent that I am here and may be perceived that uh, we condone the failure to, our, to comply with the, rule, the rules, I will be leaving now. Uh, that's fine. We are going to adjourn. Uh, Mr. Matlow says he will be here before quarter to 12. We adjourn. Thank you.
Testing one, two. Uh, is it the one that is in straight? Yeah. Yeah, but but cannot that Obi-Van, please send your camera crew up. We're about to start. Obi-Van, please send your camera crew. Thank you.
You have arrived, Mr. Mashlobo. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Prochoris, are you ready? Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, we were dealing with the PAN well, report. Be before, um, uh, before you proceed, I must just mention that it's Mtiane. It's a code. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pretorius. Uh, Mr. Schlober, we were dealing before the break uh, with the PAN report, and let me just stress that uh, I'm aware of the fact that you would have no direct knowledge of whether or not uh, any particular person was actually engaged in the activity set out in that report. Um, so the purpose of the questions is simply to ask you what you knew about the existence of the report uh, and its contents. The report itself is a classified document. The PAN 1 report is a classified document. Um, the Commission has sought the classification of a summary of that report and we're awaiting the outcome of that request. But the question is, were you briefed in relation to the PAN report when you took office or at the time uh, you took office. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, uh, our Deputy Chief Justice, Obabwe uh, Omtian, Oh, you got it right this time. Angibi zanga ngeski itisali. Yes. To Mr. Pretorius. Well, Chair, thank you. I will respond, Mr. Pretorius, but with a small indulgence that um, I will try to help you and the Commission as far as matters I know, and uh, especially during the term where I was involved. But at the very same time, the incident that happened uh, while we were virtual, I think I should place it on record. I have no intention in terms of uh, access to information and documents, whether government, uh, go, um, uh, governed by uh, the Information Security Act, which is still valid, but including the issues of oversight, because the work we're doing here today has every component of doing oversight. Well, uh, I had a discomfort chair when um, there were certain names of people that were being mentioned because as a person who was a minister and the oath of office, I can't disclose names indirectly or directly and secrets placed on me. But uh, I have a responsibility to account. The Oversight Act is very clear that at no stage should I divulge any information, any methodology, including any organ that might inadvertently reveal names. I was a little bit uncomfortable when certain names of people were being mentioned. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the signal failed us. But I wanted to be on record so that I don't, I don't want to be seen as a person who's very conscious about intelligence matters, as if uh, I allowed myself to implicate individuals. But then I can respond what uh, Honorable Pretorius is saying, while I'm having those safeguards. I thought I should just put that uh, yeah. important point. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. I assume that when you talk about names that were mentioned, you are not talking about today. You're talking about some time in the past. Your Excellency, what happened, uh, Advocate Pretorius started quoting certain things that are in the pen report. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. No, no, yeah. let, let me help you, Bob Zoli. Yes, yes. I'll help you. There are two names you mentioned that that report had an adverse finding on two individuals. The names were mentioned here. Mm. And it's my responsibility to help the commission that mm. I don't want your commission chair mm. that uh, sometimes it gets unwarranted attacks 
Mm. And mm. I must be very conscious mm. in assisting you that we don't do that. There were two names. Yeah. And I will not be able to repeat them. No, you, 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 and, you uh, can't. Because I'll be complicit. <laughs> yeah. But now I'm happy that uh, Pretorius is indicating the report is classified and uh, is sorting the de uh, declassification. Then I will respond to him now so that in as far as I was concerned, mm. without getting into the body of the report, mm. I want to place it on record, uh, Mr. Pretorius, when I became a minister, I received the report, official. And that report, when I received, it had a number of recommendations, and those recommendations were acted upon, and there were remedial actions that had to be taken. Those rem remedial actions had to be referred to the accounting officer for execution. And on an ongoing basis, because reports of IG, there are also reports that uh, we must report it to Parliament through the Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence. They had a sight of what the recommendations were, they were, they were shared, and on an ongoing basis, we, report, we reported on the progress made. At this stage, I will not be able to say how far did they implement it. I don't have the document here. And the, secondly, a, while I was at home, I made a reference to say, I don't know this numbering, 10 one. But I know in the media statements that another political party has made a request again to the IG to further investigate. And I've not heard now whether that particular investigation has been concluded. But on record, I did have the site of the report. I acted on the report. There were certain remedial actions that were to continuously report to by the accounting officer, to me as an executing authority, and the same we reported to Parliament. That's how I can help you. What we know then is that there was a report, a PAN report, that you were briefed uh, on the report or given a copy of the report and you took certain steps. We know two things, um, and these may be clarified once uh, we, and if we obtain declassification of the summary of the report, and there's absolutely no reason why we should not uh, obtain declassification in the view of the legal team, but we'll take those steps further. What we know is that there have been no prosecutions arising out of the Pan 1 report. Correct. Well, uh, that's not classified in. No. You see what you are doing, Ms. Min, uh, Mr. Pitoras. We are making an error. You want us indirectly to start to divulge the contents of the report. Remember the content of the report in terms of law. Check your Information Security Act and check your Oversight Act. I can't sit here and start to, speak, to, to, to speculate. I'm saying to you, at my level, I received a report, it had remedial actions, it, it had recommendations for remedial actions, and what I did was to say those remedial actions must be acted on by management under the guidance of the accounting office. That's the action I took. Secondly, we briefed Parliament through the Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence, which is a mechanism established in terms of the Constitution, in terms of chapter, chapter 11, section 210, that there must be a monitoring mechanism, a multi-party committee will be in place. That multi-party committee to assist the Commission, check the records of that committee in as much as they are certain classified, if you want to further investigate whether action was taken or not. But there are remedial actions to say, please do the following. 
the very same issue that I will insist when it comes to matters of an audit report. The audit report, we have to have a duty to ensure that after AG has issued it, like they have issued it in the past, remedial actions are produced and you start to implement the plan. That's how far I could be able to yes, help you. Uh, Mr. Mitlobo, you've told us at some length what was done pursuant to your receipt of the report. I uh, don't understand why you can't say what was not done. Well, uh, you, you, you want me to actually place me in a, a antenna situation. Uh, just, to, Mr. Uh, no, 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 let me finish, uh, Mr. Fitoras. Uh, 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 let me finish, please. I'll respect you. No, sure. No, no, sure. No, no, My no. apologies. No, please, please don't put weights. I'll help you. I'm saying to you, I don't remember the things that are said in the report because I don't have the possession of the report. <laughs> and I will not want Bauntian uh, Guting speculate. I'm saying, mm. and as far as the broad thrust, mm. what should an, uh, an executing authority do? Mm. And I've responded now to say, what did I do? And if there was an uh, incomplete implementation mm. of the remedial action, mm. it's another matter. Well, I was going to ask you whether part of your concern is that answering the question whether there were prosecutions following uh, your instruction for the implementation of the remedial action, whether that might uh, lead to you indirectly disclosing what remedial action may have been recommended, whether that might be part of your concern. Chairperson, we have captured it correctly. Mm. I, I remember mm. one specific recommendation mm. in that report. Mm. But if you push that line, Mm. Indirectly, I'm mm. going to have to disclose mm. what mm. this action is. While Mr. Pretorius has not had this report being declassified, I know one of these recommendations. Mm. And in mm. terms of the oath of office, I too, both as a minister, mm. but in also in terms of the law. Mm. You know, intelligence, Mr. Pretorius, works differently. There are certain things you say in a particular way. And when you say them, right now, when I'm speaking right now, I can tell you, were being washed all over the world. Mm. And there are certain things that will actually indirectly confirm some of the things. Mm. But if this report is here, Babu and it's been I'm classified. very, very clear. I remember that mm. one recommendation, mm. but I'm not going to put it here on record mm. and mm. behave mm. as if I'm a novice mm. when it comes to intelligence matters. Mm. I might not have mm. the right word, but I've just mm. used the word novice, mm. but I'm very conscious. Maybe, maybe let me ask this question, and in part, it might uh, or might not assist Mr. Pretorius. You gave instructions for the implementation of the remedial action. Yes. Is that correct? Definitely and, correct. And uh, the person whose duty it was to make sure that the, your instruction was carried out was the accounting officer. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, did you at any stage get to know whether your instruction was carried out? The accounting officer provided reports mm. on, on the implementation of the agreed remedial action proposed. Yes, yes. Equally, those remedial actions, from time to time, mm. we appraise the Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence. Yes. The reason why we were to do this, uh, Bob Zond, yes. it was a matter of public interest. Yeah. And it yeah. continued to be so. Yes. But when we come here, mm. I want to assist to the best of my ability so that you mm. can be able to see mm. the mm. truth from mm. these other smoke. Mm. But mm. Uh, the manner the question is couched, mm. very consciously, I'm going to be starting to say there was this recommendation, there was this recommendation, and uh, nothing. Yeah. Uh, Nothing actually does the pair. Yeah. No, look, I think you can, you can accept that both from Mr. Pretoria's uh, point of view and from my point of view, we certainly don't want you to act in breach of the law. 
it's just going to be an attempt on your part and on his part and on my part. That's why I saw the misstep, Baba. That's why I came in quickly the manner I came. Yes. Because yes, Mpunuk yes. Asis, that's all that no good yeah, accuses yeah. you yeah. around the political shenanigans and noise outside. When yeah. you finalize your report, yes. everybody is satisfied. Yeah. We went through a process that was fair and, adju- and just. Mm. So that at least we don't play to the sound. Yeah. Every time I see a particular point that might make us to do a misstep, you will mm. pardon me, I will highlight it. Yeah, yeah. I thought you might be able to say, without talking about details, I thought you might be able to say, look, I am aware that my instruction was carried out, or I'm aware that in some respects my instruction was carried out, but in some respects it might not have been without talk, talking about in what respects. Well, uh, Chair, I can put it on record. Mm. Um, certain aspects of the remedial action mm-hmm. were implemented. Okay. okay. And um, it was an ongoing thing. Okay. And uh, hence now, mm. Mr. Pretorius, we have this thing coded, 10-1. Mm. That's why those who are there now must complete the work. Mm. Uh, it's not about my performance assessment here mm. to say at what stage uh, did we do that. But the most important thing, actions were taken, mm. continuous reports were provided, and there mm. were certain individuals that were not happy about okay. certain things. Okay. That's why they requested, which is a public knowledge, mm. they requested the Office of the Inspector General, mm. please reinvestigate some of these aspects. Yes. Because they look to be not happy with certain aspects of the first report. Okay. And this is how far I could be able to assist you, a volunteer. Yes. Okay. Mr. Pretorius? Who was the accounting officer you referred to? Well, at the time, I did the accounting officer, uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Kujo, Ambassador Kujo, was the accounting officer when I became a minister. And then there was others after she left on acting capacity. Maybe you can just provide the spelling for her, her surname. K-U-D-J-O-E. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just for the transcribers. And uh, I want to hope that... Um, uh, by mentioning the name under your protection, I'm not breaking the law. Uh, I'm saying it reservedly because uh, accounting officers, they are generally known. Yeah, they are yeah. generally known. Yeah. It's only operatives that require names to be concealed. Pardon? The law only requires the names of operatives. No, not officials, no, as we it, understand it. it. So, it, accounting no, officers, ministers, their names need not be kept. No, 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 no. That's why I said it, Mr. Pretorius. Let's not have a problem. I've said I'm mentioning it because it's a generally known thing. Mm, mm, but immediately, yeah. it starts to deal with operational matters. Yeah. Even if it's a DG, whether it's a DDG, I'm not allowing it's operational. I know the law, Chair. So, so what you are saying is, if the DG, if you are asked about a particular matter that relates to intelligence in an operational way, if it was done by a DG or DDG, even though generally a DDG, a DG is known, but in relation to that particular project, you would not be allowed to mention the name. That's what you're saying. It's definitely so. And, yeah. Um, yeah. But where is general information? It has nothing to do with the... Uh, operations. Let, let, no, no, not, let's not use operation because yes, those, are, those, those are wrong intelligence ways. Yeah. If, it, it, if it has everything to do, mm-hmm. Chair, mm-hmm. with counterintelligence. Okay. You know, sometimes these words are used wrong, yes, and yes. I want to be within the intelligence yes. nomenclature, so that that nomenclature yeah. is a nomenclature in law. Thank okay, you. no, that's fine. Mr. Pretorius? Just two things, then, uh, arising out of uh, these exchanges, uh, Mr. McLaubel. The first is that 
Arthur Fraser was appointed in 2016. Correct. I will not recall when, which, 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 which date he was appointed, but indeed he was appointed as a DG, and right. uh, I don't have the dates here. And as I understand your evidence, uh, that the responsibility for that appointment would have been that of the president at the time, the, former president. The law is very clear how accounting officers, and also in terms of the intelligence legislation that the, the appointing authority is the head of the national executive, which is the president. And leaving aside the report, the contents of the report, the contents of the summary of the report, what recommendations were implemented and what recommendations were not implemented, our information is that there have been no prosecutions arising out of the conduct of the SSA dealt with them? Well, um, I did uh, make my reservation, Chair. We're doing a misstep again. Now, indirectly, you want me to get into those re remedial actions. All right. If you don't um, want to answer, that's fine. No, no, no. We're I need to. No, 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 Mr. Mr. Petras, please, let's help Ms. Ubabzon. You own the questions, I own the answers. And if you want to prove, I'm saying to you, now this question is placing me to start to confirm matters that are in the remedial action. And I will not do that, Babzo. I understand your answer. I don't agree with your answer, but we can make submissions but, but, but to the chair my, in it's due my, course. It's my answer. It's my, it's my turn, please, mm -hmm. Mr. Meshlobo. I understand your answer. I don't agree with your answer. Whether or not there have been prosecutions is a matter of public record and should remain a matter of public record, but let's move on. Chairperson, you will help us to help you. If Mr. Pretorius decides to make opinions, that is insinuation, will you be able that we start to get into that? I don't have intentions to do that. Because right now, he's mm. making indirectly a judgment that mm. what I'm saying, I'm wrong. Mm. And well, the, I don't want to be starting challenging him. Yeah. I'm saying immediately you raise the matter of prosecutions. Mm. And it's your call ultimately when you finalize mm. your report. Mm. I'm saying it's the same mm. first thing that I was asked, mm. but in a different way. Mm. Let's not try to actually step to that direction. Mm. Because I've responded. Yeah. Let, let's leave it where it is. Uh, Mr. Pritchard said he's happy to proceed. To proceed. Yes. Uh, let's leave it where it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, in your affidavit, uh, Mr. Mitlobo, you deal with certain procedural matters. I would just like to place certain things on record which should not be controversial. In January 2021, uh, six Rule 33 notices were forwarded to you. In fact, on the 19th of January. Are you able to confirm that? Which paragraph are you referring to? No, I'm, I'm putting facts on our no, records No, no, no. You. Remember, I've, uh, I've given you my affidavit. Yes, well, I'm asking you a question, Mr. Mishlobu. No. I'm asking you if you confirm that 633 notices were sent to you. If you don't know, just say no, so. No, no. Mr. Pitoras, please, let's help the process. Don't do this. I'm saying this matter is in my affidavit. Help me and refer me to paragraph, because you're starting to mention a date now. What if I give a wrong date and I start to mislead the judge? I don't want to do that. But, but mm. Mr. McLobo, uh, you're, perfectly at, um, you're perfectly entitled, when I ask a question, to say, let me refer to my affidavit. It's your affidavit, and uh, we'll be very patient. Um, if the information is in your affidavit, we can place it on record. If it's not, I would still like to ask the question. No, it's fine. Where you refer to dates, if they are not, if they are not in my affidavit, you'll give me the source, then I'll respond. Chair, I don't want to confirm the date. I want to confirm that I did receive the notice. Yes. Um, you, you, you can't remember whether this would have been January 2021 this year or last year. It was the end of 
that you can't remember. No, they were received this year. They are received this and year. And the, the records in the commission and secretariat, including my legal team here, that can be they have the specific checked. dates. Yeah. Well, I'm putting year. those to you, yeah. if I may. The, what appears from the record, um, and uh, my instructions, I think, are not controversial, that uh, you did receive 3-3 three, three notices. When you first received them, there were no documents annexed. They still had to go through a declassification process. But my instructions are that the declassified documents were sent to you some weeks later on the 8th of February that were uh, annexed to the 3-3 three, three notices ultimately. Well, maybe let's, let's, let's do this. Uh, in paragraph four, I think paragraphs four and five of your affidavit, Mr. Mashrobo, in paragraph four you say, during the period that the State Security Agency evidence was led in January 2021 and following the section 33 notices that were issued to me, I immediately informed my legal representatives to interact with the legal team of the State Capture Commission wherein they made it plain that I intended to cooperate with the State Capture Commission and to also apply to cross-examine some of the witnesses whose statements implicated me in acts of wrongdoing and furnish the Commission with an affidavit. Uh, certainly what you, what does seem to, it does seem that it might have been in January or soon thereafter that you received the three, three notices there. You don't put it directly like that. And paragraph five says several letters were issued shortly after I was served with the section three, three notices, wherein I requested to be finished with the witnesses' statements. The annex has referred to therein and the documents in possession of the State Capture Commission and the SSA as far as they related to me. Uh, it doesn't look like you do state when you receive them, but you have said it was this year when you received them. I think what, what remains, do you remember whether it, it was six three, three notices or, or you don't remember that, that, that detail? Well, well, Chair, in my affidavit is self-explanatory. On record, I did receive the notices, mm. and when the notices were received, they were referred to my legal team, oh. and my legal team that is here now, they started interacting with uh, the secretariat of your office, the secretary of the commission, okay. and uh, it's clearly that uh, we received the notices, but there were documents we requested mm. from the commission, and there are um, correspondence to that effect mm. uh, on administrative matters that I don't want to get into because mm -hmm. I want to get to the substance. Mm -hmm. Mr. Metlogo. And uh, I was still uh, concluding, Chair. Yeah. And uh, I'm on record that uh, these documents were not fi furnished until these documents, most of them, we got them last night. But uh, 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 which uh, was issue that I said that they, there are some administrative challenges that are there, but they, that doesn't preclude me to engage on the matters that are raised in the notices. But mm -hmm. I want to confirm that uh, notices were received and maybe mm -hmm. they were received. Others, they were received in the course of the proceeding. Mm -hmm. Mr. McLobo, it's incumbent upon me to put to you uh, the record of what documents were sent to you and your attorney, and I wish to do so in order to deal with the allegations you make in the paragraphs in your affidavit. If you don't know the answer to the question, that's fine. I just want to place them on record, and you can make whatever comments you choose, because there are certain allegations in here which are incorrect, and they need to be corrected. This is your statement, it's on oath, and I'm entitled, and incum it's incumbent upon me to deal with them. In fairness to you, and in fairness to the Commission. So I'm going to ask you, uh, against that background, um, if you can confirm or not confirm, or whether you have any knowledge of what the record is. In January, 633 notices were sent to you. January 2021. 
Yes, I did receive the notices. Yes. In February, in fact, on the 8th of February, those notices were resent. Uh, this time with the declassified annexures attached. In you know that would not no, no, I will not recall All that. All right, that's fine. On the 25th of February 2021, a request for an affidavit together with a bundle of new declassified documents was sent to your attorney. You know of that? That's not true. Well, we can, I'll call the evidence if necessary. No, 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 Mr. Peteras, allow me to respond. You see, I was not going to put something here. One of the things, uh, Babzonde, that I try to do, mm. there have been frustrations, mm. both by the Commission Secretariat, not you, in mm. furnishing my attorney's documents. Mm. And the, ultimately, even SSA refused mm. Mm. official requests. There's been too many letters. Mm. And uh, if Mr. Pretorius wants to deal with administrative issues mm. around paperwork, mm. I'm not in a best place to help him. Mm. My attorneys here can be able to respond because mm. I don't want us to spend the whole day mm. Mm. dealing with administrative issues. I mm. said despite all these administrative challenges that mm. have happened, mm. including receiving 305 pages mm. yesterday electronically, mm after seven, mm. when they were discussing that these documents are going to be delivered by five o'clock, go mm. to my house. Mm. And ordinarily, I will not give people my house number. Mm. But my attorney requested me to do so. Mm. But documents were delivered. They were not delivered. They mm. were actually even brought mm. electronically in the afternoon. Mm. But that's not why I'm here, mm. to argue documents. Mm. The issue is to say, do I know this document? If I know, I'll say so. I deal with the allegation. Please don't know. If now we're going to be fighting over dates, I'm not competent to do that. Okay. Mr. Pretorius, I, I suggest that we do the following. To the extent that uh, in relation to the exchange of documents, there are some things in Mr. Mashabo's affidavit that do not accord with the legal team's understanding. Can we have an arrangement in terms of which a discussion, maybe during the lunch break, can be had between yourself and Mr. Mashabo's legal team so that if possible, later on, you can just place on record something that's uh, kind of agreed to say that's the position. If it's not agreed, we can then well, There is one important thing. Yes. Uh, Mr. Matlobo has gone on oath yeah. to say that certain documents were received only in the past two weeks. Yes. That is incorrect as a matter of record. It's a statement yes. on oath, and it's incumbent upon me yes. to put what we will argue in due course yes. is incorrect. Yes. And it's just one issue I want to put to him now. Yeah, and then you are done with the... Yeah. Well, yes. Oh, with the... Sure. Just oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Sure. I've, I've hesitantly said here, yeah, and, and, and I've equally so reserved my discharge of my obligation and duty as a legal representative and I've been referred by my client seeking protection from you. You have also uh, suggested uh, to my learned colleague as to how to deal best with the administrative issue, which mm. you will have heard from my client is tried several times for hours now mm. to avoid to engage on administrative issues and we get to the crux and the trust of the issues. Mm. Mm. So, but, but it cannot also be correct as it has been uh, uh, put forward as a matter of correcting what is an incorrect version from our side. Mm -hmm. But there is two sides of the coin mm -hmm. which, which you have gui given guidance and a directive. And I will respectfully mm -hmm. uh, uh, accept that, that we mm -hmm. deal with it off mm -hmm. the records to mm -hmm. uh, not indulge on, on mm -hmm. administrative issues, as my client has said. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. uh, however my colleague would want to deal with it, because there's a lot of things that I could have stood up and, and spoken about mm. that we are unhappy, mm. that we can record as prejudice. But yeah. as my, my client has said, we have tried to come here mm. relatively on the short notices, griping yeah. and yeah. being dragged. But as an obligation and the duty we owe to the mm. citizens, mm. 
Mm. We have done so grudgingly, but we are here. Yeah. We are trying to help you. So can we progressively go to the thrust of the issues instead of, as you have suggested, Chair? Uh, uh, Chair, can, can with your permission, uh, Chair, you indulge me? Uh, I'm happy that uh, you have made the suggestion. Mm. And uh, um, my legal representative is correct. I'm amenable to that. Mm. I'm not going to be discussing details here, even in my affidavit. Mm. I'm not accusing that this document is this document. It's a broad general statement I've made. Mm. And the, the last point, uh, 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 Honorable uh, Chair, mm. I even insisted mm. when there were certain things happening that, you know what, I want to deal with these matters. Mm. There was mm. even a suggestion to postpone for Monday. Mm. And I refused. Mm. I refused. I'm here today, yeah. Chair, even if you go long haul, yeah. I want to deal with these issues because some of them, yeah. they impact on my reputation. Mm. And I'm happy that the administrative issues, where there's an error or what, they will yeah. talk among themselves as you directed, yeah. will correct what we need to correct. Uh, Mr. Pretorius, my yeah. inclination is this. Um, one, what I have understood from Mr. Mashobo and his legal team is that they are not taking the point that because on Mr. Mashobo's version they didn't receive certain documents timelessly, uh, they don't want to uh, continue my understanding is that Mr. Mashobo's position is I will try and deal with all issues that I can deal with, even in regard to documents that I might have received late, but where I am unable to, I will say so. So my inclination is that uh, uh, there needs to be that discussion that I talked about and at a later stage uh, decision, you can in indicate to me whether uh, you do want to place certain things on record, and uh, that would be fine. But it seems to me that that discussion should precede that. Well, Chair, okay, I would mm. uh, appreciate the opportunity yeah. uh, to address you on that. Yeah, do, do that. In paragraph 6, Mr. Mitchell makes a statement on oath to the effect that certain documents were only given to him with the 10-6 notice recently. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand mm. that between an attorney and a client, mm. um, the communications may not be such mm. as all the matters are within mm. uh, Mr. Mishlobo's knowledge, but this is a statement on oath. All mm. I want to put on record mm. is that those documents mm. which he complains were sent to him late were in fact sent mm. um, in February. Mm -hmm. That's all I want to put on record. Mm -hmm. Chair, sure. I want to respond. I have not said in my affidavit mm. which document. Mm. That administrative issue, mm. as we have guided us, mm. the lawyers must work on it. But I'm putting it on record because I received those documents. It's not an opinion. And I don't want any aspirations to be cast on my legal team. Let them clear it. Mm. But we're here on the serious matters and they can be able to do that because mm. the statement in my affidavit it says some mm. then they will deal with that qualitative part yeah okay all right my, my ruling is that there should be that discussion and at a later stage if the commission's legal team uh, wants to place anything on record we can take it uh, from there that stage so uh, uh did i summarize your position correctly that even <laughs> with regard to documents that you may have received on what? your version late you are here you are prepared to answer as far as you can and bob zonda have said i'm even prepared mm. to answer even documents that are not here as mm. far as i could help you mm. i don't want yeah an impression that mm. i never assisted i have instruction mm. 
from my party mm -hmm. and my president to mm -hmm. cooperate. Yeah. Those issues, if there are going to be limitations mm -hmm. because of documentation at a particular point when you deal with substance, mm -hmm. I, will, I will advise you. Yeah. And you will make a determination. Okay. Let's move on then, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Robo, if we may. In paragraph 9 of your affidavit, and I'm going to deal with certain issues in your affidavit. If I go too far, in other words, if I leave out something that you wish to emphasize, um, please stop me and deal with it. But your affidavit is a matter of record. It is before the chair, um, and I'm going to ask you certain questions on the contents of your affidavit. Then I'm going to put further documents to you, but you're free to say but you're now in paragraph 9. In paragraph 8, I want to say X, Y, Z. It's very helpful. Good. In paragraph 9, um, you say, I participated in the high-level review panel on the SSA by giving testimony on activities and the conducts of the SSA. Question that I'd like to ask you, do you have any record of your evidence? Well, uh... The record of my participation will be with the panel itself. Yes. Uh, I never recorded myself, but uh, they had a secretariat, and it's on record I participated. Yes, no, my question is somewhat different. We've. I don't have the record. It do you have be... your own notes? Do you have your own prepared statement? I don't have them, yeah. Uh, yeah, do you have it at all? No, I don't have at all? Yes. They never asked me for an affidavit. Okay. I was in, their methodology, I was interviewed. But I'm on record on the interview they made. And their best place to provide you with that report. And the, remember, the president actually ultimately released the report in as much as it was a, a redacted version. Um. As your attorney pointed out, there are certain typographical errors, but I don't think we need to deal with them. They're quite obvious typographical yeah, errors. Yeah, it's just we'll the, the spelling them. of the name. Thank you. There has been evidence by Dr. Mufamadi and others uh, in relation to the status of the white paper and the constitutional requirements. You deal with those in paragraph 12. Well, uh, I, don't, I don't only deal with the matters of the status of law. I start to deal with the matters of the status of the constitutionality, because constitutionality was a serious matter raised here. Yeah? And the, on record, it must be started from 10, 11, then you can proceed there, Mr. Victoria. Well, um, if you wish to raise anything uh, in relation to the legislation outlined by you in paragraph 11, please do so. But uh, well, uh, I'm not I, sure I, I, I just want to please on one, one, one or two matter, Babu uh, Mtia, that um, witnesses came here and they created an impression that only two legislation matters. And it's only the Constitution and the White Paper. And that impression is wrong. And I want to put it on record. Intelligence, because of our past and where we come from, and the abuses and politicization and so forth, that we use as an instrument that some of us got exposed to as a young person, including yourselves and others, in South Africa is highly regulated. And the Constitution is very clear that there will be national legislation. And I'm started to assist the Commission. These are some of the national legislation as required by the Acts of Parliament Chair that govern this environment. And on, on page 12, where Honorable Pretorius, you are trying to refer to, in the doctrine of legislation making in South Africa, 
you either produce a green paper or you produce a white paper. Those documents, they are not equating to national legislation, but they equate to strategic intent, policy aspects, but ultimately, ultimately, it's the law passed by parliament and, and assented to by the head of the national executive. The assertion that was made about the status of the white paper to say not correct on record. Well, we can look at uh, the detail of what was said in that regard. Several witnesses gave evidence in relation to the contents of the white paper, be that as it may. Um, if I may but, move... But, but can I just come in, Chair? Uh, you will help me, Mr. Pitorius, because I don't want to interject. Let's not throw opinions in passing. Let's deal what is the law. The white paper is not the law. Well, he is responding, Mr. Mashobo, to what you said. You said certain witnesses came here and gave the impression that the uh, white paper is, is law. I think that that's, that's what you said. Oh, so he, I, I, he, I take the point. Yeah, his, his response is, we look at whether that's what those witnesses said. Yeah. But uh, that, that's how at least I understood you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, all right. We're on the same thing. Yeah. And, and indeed, um, I don't think there's any disagreement that the uh, most important expression of the law is in the Constitution. Definitely. I'd like to move on to paragraph 16 to deal very briefly with what you found when you came into office in 2014. Uh, paragraph 16. Paragraph 16, yes. Okay, I'm there. Um, it says in paragraph or you say in paragraph 16, line 2, there was no proper accounting structure in place, mainly because of the nature of the operation of the intelligence community. Um, would you explain that, please? Well, um, this is a broad statement. Uh, I'll, I'll not give a, a specific, because here, there are certain things that uh, it's important that one explain his role. When you come into an institution, you do what we call it uh, an institutional scanning. In military, it's called recon. You <laughs> just assess. And um, very importantly, there were matters that uh, were very problematic and somewhere we deal with them. Some of these things you see in the notices about behavior, this, accounting, this. These are some of the issues that I'm referring to just to give, or oh, the same way the Babzondo Bab used. What do you call it? Laying the foundation. On 16, I'm laying the foundation. But these are the systematic issues that come over time. And here, I would want to be in a position that after this foundation is laid by 16, we started to respond to the question, what did you do? Because an impression was given, really, really nothing was done. Probably you aided the worsening of the situation. That's why you will see how this affidavit is couched. But this is a statement of my own subjective assessment either informed by audit reports, informed by other things, I'm putting it on record as my foundation for engagement. And well, also dealing with some of these issues, uh, Peter, as you remember these issues uh, where people think about uh, politicization, all these issues, we'll deal with them later on. But these issues, they actually proceed, even the term I was. I never found a ship that was floating. There were things that were working, mm. and there were things that were worrying. Mm. Mm. In fact, I am sure that with your experience, Mr. Mashlobo, the chair would be very interested in 
uh, your understanding of what remedial measures might or might not be required. Uh, we'll come to that. Yes. Maybe I could say, uh, Mr. Maxwell, I think, I think Mr. Pretorius wanted to establish whether you are able to say, in relation to that sentence, you are able to say, for example, um, there was no structure that assisted with this type of accountability. What? There was no structure that assisted with this type of situation. And this, the absence of that structure uh, created these types of problems. Uh, I, I was uh, thinking maybe he, he, he had that. I, I want to do that, but a little bit cautious. Yes, yes. Because some of these matters, I will deal with them later on. Yeah. On the specifics on the affidavit. Okay. But generally, mm -hmm. there were weaknesses. Yes. And very serious ones. Yes. And some of them systematic. Okay. And they, they don't even start at the time mm. of 2014, mm. May. Mm. They start as far back as 1995, okay. when these intelligence services were established. But when we start to engage on the meat, yeah. we will engage. You, but you. Uh, the environment was uh, having its difficulties. There were things that were working, and there were things that were not working. And I had to, to tighten up certain things. Well, uh, it would be a matter whether my efforts were the best I could or not, but we'll then demonstrate later. Okay. Let's move then to paragraph 17, uh, where you say, I inherited an agency that was greatly divided and characterized by mistrust and allegations of political interference. Um, the notion of political interference in the affairs of the State Security Agency um, has to an extent been dealt with by previous witnesses. Um, it would assist us if you gave us your understanding of what is not uh, proper by way of political interference. Well, um, what are you referring to there? Well, if I'm referring to issues uh, of uh, political interference, so you will have to be able to make a reference to the Constitution. The Constitution is very clear as our supreme law that when we speak on Chapter 11 around uh, security services, they are guiding principles how they must do certain things, and there are certain things they must not do. And over years, there are certain things about political issues, political meddling, or being security services used as an instrument to advance certain interests, whether factional, whether what, what, whatever is that. But it's very important that I must insist what the law says. Those are the principles. This matter of political interference or political uh, issues around how state institutions are being used, not a new phenomenon. As far back as uh, the challenges of my movement, of which I know that uh, the leadership is coming here in the next uh, few days to engage with you. Those allegations were made at, the, at that time. And they continue to be made at the time the other president came in. And they continue to be made even today. That's the environment. Whether the merits and demerits, it's a different matter. But it's a matter which is called common cause. That's what I had uh, in that institution. And that's what continues to be. And it's one of the matters that even going forward, how do we ensure that those guiding principles referred to under Section 199 of the Constitution, we do our best of our abilities that uh, they are safeguarded, 
and where there are weaknesses, we started to say, is it a weakness in law, weakness in policy, weakness in leadership, or weakness in terms of consequence management? That's what I'm placing it on record. Um, I understand you to be saying, and I just want you to confirm that my understanding is correct. Mm. I understand you to be saying, when you took office as Minister of State Security, you found, among other things, that there were allegations of political interference in matters relating to your portfolio. You understood that they were not new. They had been there for a long time. You go back to 1995, and you say, allegations of political interference have continued continued uh, during your or term in office they continue even today is my understanding of what you are saying correct maybe chairperson you are correct Let, let's maybe probably before you look at allegation of political interference the security agency because on how we arrived at the democratic dispensation. There were people that were brought together. Mm. They never saw eye to eye. Mm. They did things to each other that mm. are terrible, mm. but uh, were to forge a united, mm. prosperous and a democratic South Africa. Mm. They were brought together. Mm. There are issues of pretty Jews, there are issues how they felt among themselves. Those issues never dissipated on one day. Even today, the people who work for the apartheid security forces are there in security forces. And their orientation and their psyche. And the people who are coming from former liberation movements in terms of their armies, they are there. And they are trained in a particular way. You know how you see when there are problems in intelligence is when people, they come and do peddling. Peddling is to lie and create certain stories. We'll come and deal with them. Mm. One of the stories they create about judges and create about people that despise. Mm. And it will mm. look and suit you. Mm. <laughs> Even yourself, they will say things about you, mm. Mm. And you, you will find people leaking documents. You know, the law is very clear how information must be managed. And it continues to happen today. Mm. There are certain things and practices because on how we concluded our matters. They continue to be devil this. And all of us, we should be party to a solution to help. They are very good men and women there. Mm. But there are also men and women whose conduct and whose orientation actually is not taking the country forward. But we'll deal with that. Mm. But it's very important because people who came here, Babzon, mm. they never gave an opportunity mm. to explain how intelligent is, how does it come from, and so forth. Mm. Even they too, I can tell you, they are political animals, political mm. players. Mm. And as an intelligence person that has been trained, I can mm. read mm. what's the end game. Mm. But I'm not going to do that because mm. uh, we have, but it's important to say, let's not be selective on how mm. far our challenges are. So that when you make a recommendation, mm. Mm. probably far-reaching reforms mm. are going to be required to be done. Mm. But uh, just read the uh, page, uh, is it not page, it's paragraph 17, in context. Mm. Because most of you are here, we are not intelligent pe pe mm. people. Mm. Mm. We've been on the ground, mm. we know how it works, mm. and so forth. You mm. interpret the law. Mm. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Mr. Pretorius. Mr. Pretorius. Yes, so I understand uh, you refer to common cause and matters of principle. It to be a matter of principle as far as you're concerned that the state security agency shouldn't interfere in party politics or factional it, politics it, within parties. We are correct. Uh, 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 but let's qualify it, Mr. Pretorius. Uh, as long as those parties, as long as those parties, they don't do anything against the law. Yeah. Intelligence is everywhere. 
including even in my own bedroom. I can have a spy in my bedroom or in my home. It's everywhere. It's not that it supports the security of the state and its people. And it will be there. In intelligence, it's very simple. They say that you must just know that someone, always know that someone is listening or someone is watching. Well, I always know that God is watching. But uh, that's what I... have assumed that for the last three years, and I think correctly. No, 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 it's true. Well, we will talk about some, some funny things that are even happening now about my team, how intelligence is being used to push certain things that we must say no to, because unlawful things must not happen under our, under our watch. In the last sentence of paragraph 17, you say you made it your duty and mission to steer the agency towards a new direction of transparency and accountability. Um, can we deal with that at the end of your testimony as to... I'll t thank you very much. We can do that. Because the chair will have to make some recommendations about the evidence he's heard. Well, uh, we'll clearly share what is our thought uh, about how we can improve certain things. I know His Excellency, our president, says certain things must be done there that we support him. But... Uh, my views will not be the panacea for all the challenges, but I have an, an, a view to make. If we go to paragraph 19.2, um, towards the end of the paragraph, you are talking about the operational directive that you refer to there, and you say this directive would explain why I would not have direct access to operations, the nature of the operations, the members involved in that particular operation and the persons or the person who conceived should read those operations as they were conducted on a need to know basis. Um, what I would like to ask is the position of the minister in the SSA and whether that minister should be involved in or have knowledge of operational activities? Let's probably, with your indulgence, Chair, I'm referring to matters of directives or regulations. They are provided for in the law. Um, I might not be quoting the right one now here, but uh, the law is very clear about the powers of the minister especially in the National Strategic Intelligence Act. It has got to be uh, amended over time and again. And equally, there is this law called the General uh, Intelligence L A I Amendment Laws. And um, it also, even the in Intelligence Oversight Act, it, it says in the course of our duties to implement the law, the national legislation, we might do regulation. Sometimes the regulation are in form of directives or okay. guidance. I hear you better when you are facing this side. My apology, <laughs> okay. I'm saying on the basis of law, the powers of the minister are very defined. But for intelligence to work, we must create rules. This document called Operational Directive is one of the rules that is very important. And policy making is the responsibility of the executing authority, which is the minister. This is one of the important issues that for all the issues that are relevant to counterintelligence, I don't want us to use this word special operation because this work is about counterintelligence. There had to be rules because there were problems. Problems were there. The first thing you do as a minister, hey, what do we do? Let's strengthen the, 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 the law, or let's strengthen the regulation. These two that I'm mentioning here, uh, 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 Mr. Pretorius, are not the only two. There are a number of them. Uh, they are called operational directives. And I think uh, certain elements have to do with HR, uh, certain elements have to do with uh, COVID operation and so forth and I'm placing it on record because the witnesses that came here, they created an impression we worked willy-nilly. 
And these ones I'm putting in there. Not only this uh, 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 Babuntia, there was even things uh, uh, Mr. Pitoras called, which is part of the regulation or, or guidelines, is even called Ministerial Payment Directive. Those are the most important things that were to put in place. And some of them, they were there before. I must be able to say, I must not create an impression they were not there. They were there. And the, every time, every year, the AG requires that policies must be updated. There is even a review period. One of the things I signed in 2015, remember I came in the middle of the financial year. One of the things that immediately the financial year ended, so that you can start 2015, 2016 well, was to ensure that regulation on how we do our work is in place. You say, however, and I understand that it's difficult to make absolute statements, and general statements sometimes lead to uh, misunderstandings, but you do say here, um, this directive would explain why I would not have direct access to operations, the nature <coughs> of the operations, the members involved in that particular operation, and the person who conceived that operation as they were conducted on a need-to-know basis. Now, arising out of that and arising out of the evidence that other witnesses have given, as a general principle, is it correct or incorrect that a minister should not be involved directly in operational activity? Well, um, let me answer some of these allegations while we're here. Uh, one, there is no law. There is no law. And these people were here. They could not tell you, Babzon, which law say the minister may or may not be involved. There is no law. I, I will come to this directive, but there is no law, Mr. Pitoras, that there is any reference. Um, in my case, I was not involved. That's my answer. I was not involved. But there was no law bearing me not to do that. But do you know that people who are... Uh, just before you proceed, Mr. Mashlobo, Mr. Pretorius is going to tell me if I misunderstood his question. Uh, he was asking whether you agree or you don't agree that a minister should not be involved in those matters. Now, uh, should not might mean you should not because it would be unlawful to do so, <laughs> but should not might mean that although it might be lawful, maybe for other reasons, such as ethics and uh, other uh, things, no, it might not I, be. I would want to help you, Bob Zondo, because yes. we have witnesses who come here and they don't share how intelligence environment works. Mm -hmm. I'll respond. To, my answer is very clear. The mm -hmm. allegations they are making that I was involved in operation, I deny it. Yeah, okay. I'm on record. Mm -hmm. But I want to assist mm -hmm. this commission. Mm -hmm. And remember, we are not being watched here, but we are mm -hmm. also watched internationally. Mm -hmm. Even other foreign internal inter in, mm -hmm. uh, agencies right now mm -hmm. that are here at home and abroad, they are watching. Mm -hmm and let's not actually create some stupidity of ourselves. There is something that I want to put it on record. There is no law that says ministers, or the minister, let me use the word, the minister or the president must be involved or not involved. There is no law. But let me just assist you and say, do you know that when you run counterintelligence in the cause of your national interest. The people that get to be recruited to assist you to push your national agenda or national interest, they are not on the same level. Even the biggest intelligence organization, whether it's the Russians, whether it's the Chinese, whether it's the British military intelligence, whether it's the CIA, even presidents, you can recruit a president. Mm. Other countries in terms of intelligence work, they actually get presidents that they want and interfere in other countries' things. Mm. Where another, will you think that a president can be managed by a June? Mm. 
Will you think that a general in a country will be managed by a Jew? The levels are not the same. Who then becomes everybody in intelligence is a recruiter. Some, they come themselves to be recruited. We must be able to demystify certain things that have happened here. There is no law, but depending on how aggressively you push your national interest, using intelligence, because intelligence is not something that is new, is actually centuries and centuries ago. You will know. For an example, if tribes are not supposed to fight, you'll get your daughter to marry on the other side. It still happens today. Even other countries, they get their certain citizens to go and get to be married in other countries. You don't know whether we are, we are actually staying with a spy or not. But I thought I should be able to say this thing. Because if I don't say it, an impression will be created that uh, intelligence, which is information, very important to make decisions, can only be gotten to people of certain levels. But my answer, I might have been long-winded, I never ran operations. But equally so, there is no law that says you can do this or you can't do that. I understand your answer, uh, Mr. McLobo. Uh, one thing I would like to place on record, uh, because this theme has emerged in evidence before, is that uh, certainly we will submit to the chair that the standards which should apply and be adhered to uh, by our own state security agencies uh, should be established by our own policies and our own constitution. And if those are more strict and higher standards than other countries, so be it. But the standards oh, are oh, our oh, own oh. standards, not those of other countries. Let me just ask this to you, Mr. That's an opinion they made. That standard they couldn't tell you where is it? There's nothing in law. I'm very conversant with the legislation that govern intelligence. It's an opinion. Probably going forward, you might want to discuss the question. What should be the role of politicians? But also don't discuss the role of politicians without understanding what is intelligence. When everybody can become a recruit, as long as you advance your national interest and national security. And this is not a new doctrine. Intelligence is a trade craft. It has its own ways of working. There are views that uh, traditionally, even big democracies even today, they're still grappling with it. Because the more we practice these things, we find certain weaknesses. Uh, go everywhere to find it. Even ourselves, we're not unique. We're dealing with that. But this thing of a standard, there's no standard here written. These, guideline, these guidelines or directives are a policy in terms of law that we to make. And they are very clear what could be done, what do you do with this one. Probably they are not adequate depending on our experiences. That's what I would say. But it can be a matter of fact. If these standards were there, they will have been part of the documents that will have been furnished. Let's go to paragraph 32. I know it's a great leap forward. You, you can keep your mic on, Mr. Marshall, on at no, all times. Uh, uh, just on the level of the level of the intelligence is yeah. true. The one in the world is that the people who are in the world are in the world. The people who are in the world I don't want to discuss methodologies. When is my time? Just indulge with me. Even when is my time to respond, I'll make it all. Yes. You, you made a promise earlier on, you remember, not to revert to your mother tongue. <laughs> you have forgotten now. You want to just say that again for, so that everybody knows what you were saying? Uh, it's a chat between a father and a son. <laughs> Uh, I don't think it's material, Chair. <laughs> uh, the Chair was asking me to keep the mic on. I told him that uh, I have a preference uh, for certain security reasons to keep it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. We're learning as we go along. <laughs> no, I'm here to support well, and help. Well, well, 
Mr. Mashabo, I guess I should ask you whether I should keep mine on. <laughs> you see, Babzan, it's very simple. I can, yeah. I can do profiling, how you speak, yeah. how you breathe, how you do certain things. <laughs> and you have people are watching you there. Remember, this thing is not on a law session. Yeah. Someone is taking notes somewhere. Yeah. yeah. I guess uh, they take uh, notes uh, even when, when I cough, yeah. even when I cough or sneeze. <laughs> yes, Mr. Pretorius? See, it's one o'clock. Um, because of the problems of technology, we have lost quite some time this morning. I wonder whether we, we should take less than an hour for our lunch or whether we should stick to an hour. Um, so I'm just checking so that I don't impose. My, uh, my view, Chair, with the break mm. and with your indulgence and the permission of Mr. Pretorius, mm. let's push for another hour. Then we'll take a break. Mm -hmm. I'm here to help. I want yes. us to conclude. So your, your suggestion is maybe let's continue and then take the lunch break a little. Not yeah, a little, let's maybe push for an hour. Uh, make some progress. And then we're trying to make up time. Mm. Mr. Pretorius, what do you think? I am happy as long as it's convenient to you, Chair. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't have a problem. I know that one has arrangements sometimes. Sorry? No. I know that you might have arrangements uh, yes. over the lunch break. <clears throat> yeah, no, yeah, so sometimes I do, but I think it's fine. Maybe not for an hour as such, but maybe let's see how far we are at half past one. Yes. And uh, maybe we can go up to quarter I'm, two. I'm two, comfortable. Two. Yes. Uh, and I think your counsel is fine as well with that. I am, Jeff. Thank yes. you. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's continue. Let's go to paragraph 32 of your statement. I just have one question to ask in relation to the contents of that paragraph um, where you say that during 2014 the country experienced unprecedented levels of sharper political contestation characterized by subversive activities within and outside of parliament. All these factors and challenges, economic weakness seen in 2014 had serious implications for national security and the stability of South Africa. Uh, all I want to ask in this context and on the basis of the statement, Mr. Ms. Robo, is activities which undermine or negatively influence the economy of the country, are those activities which may all within the mandate of the SSA. Well, uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, the, the, this does fall within the mandate uh, of uh, intelligence services. And um, you will find even a better answer. I don't have the notes here for you, uh, uh, Pretorius. The definition of national security uh, is in the National Strategic Intelligence Act. It's very broad, very broad. It encompasses economy, environment. It encompasses everything. And people, they have views, different views even today. That uh, broad definition is a problem. Uh, there are those views. But I'm not going to start to express a view. But it's there in law, what it covers. That's why, uh, 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 Mr. Pretorius, there is something that uh, is very important uh, that you will see when we start to deal with something which is called National Intelligence Estimate, which is paragraph 84. Because National Intelligence Estimate on the basis of law, whether how national security, national interest is defined, and all these other things. The country is required by law that it must have a security assessment. That security assessment, the law place it correctly, that is the responsibility of all the intelligence services, the three of them. They come together in a structure 
called the National Intelligence Coordinating Committee and is established by law. It is a coordinate. They do a threat, security threat assessment. Then from there, they look at all the issues as defined as part of the broader trust of the national, uh, national, uh, uh, na uh, national security, including uh, national strategic intelligence. What is national strategic intelligence? It's them. Then they have pillars. At a particular point, I decided to share with you and the commission, what were these areas of the national intelligence estimate? So that when government started to actually discharge its responsibility in terms of the law, the constitution, but also in terms of the governing party manifesto that those that have won elections, they produce a strategic document called medium-term strategic framework. What are these risks? What are these opportunities? That information, it looks at the totality of the state. State, I don't mean the executive, the, the state, our nation would, both from domestic threats and foreign threats. Then you produce this important document. And every time we must start to work, we must start to respond to this risk assessment too. But later on, we'll get into that. That's why on 34, it says the NIE was always linked to national security intelligence as required by the law. On the basis of the security risk and threat assessment, the intelligence services embark on counterintelligence. Counterintelligence is very important. What are the things that need to be done there? Covert collections, domestic and foreign intelligence operations in line with national security and national interest imperative. I wrote this because there's a view that other people came and share here, that a number of counterintelligence activities that were done, they were done outside the law. And we have to be able to dismiss that with the contempt it deserves. Because the law, and when you do an assessment, you break it down. Fortunately, I'm a former accounting officer. I worked in government as an HOD. I know this administration. You started to link. How does it link to the medium-term strategic framework? How does it link into the strategic plan? How does it link to the NIE? And all these things that are being done, or the things that are allegedly that they were being done, a question must be asked. Was it within this risk assessment provision by law? This provision, Chair, it must be considered by the executive, national executive. Not something for you there. I help them, you go in there, you present to cabinet. That thing had died before uh, I became a minister. There was a time when there was a land where the executive by law would have considered this important risk assessment too. I work with the people that we're supposed to do for the first time as a security cluster. We actually reintroduce it so that we can be able to say, but really, why did you do this? Why did you do this? I did this because this was linked to this, this was linked to this, and anything that is not linked to that, you can't be able to say, but this is an outlier. Then you can explain your action. Uh, I might have been wrong, Mr. Pitoras, but uh, it's important that uh, we assist each other when we come here. <laughs> In paragraph uh, 36, then, you refer to the particular threats to the authority of the state uh, that you foreshadowed in your discussion of the National Intelligence Estimate, the NIE. Uh, I just want to ask you, in terms of paragraph 36, sub-paragraph 4, you deal with threats to the economy of the Republic, and specifically mentioned under that head is... Uh, the concept of corruption. Um, corruption, too, would be uh, a matter that might legitimately draw the attention of a security agency in South Africa. 
that correct? Before I respond to that, uh, I need with your permission, Chair, there is something here. Probably I will need the... Uh, okay. No, no, no. I, I, I've got it right now. Hey, you know, the light is not good here. Um, oh, on the, the lighting is not good there. But <laughs> No, I'm going to come to this corruption issue now. The NIE have decided to say, what were these pillars of the NIE? And I want to put them on record so that we also demystify that certain things that happened might have not been informed by policy position. The threats that we faced as a country, they were classified into five areas. And these five areas, Chair, without actually disclosing the NIE, because the NIE is not a public document. But this one, uh, Chair, I'm taking liberty that uh, when I appeared in Parliament, in the Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence presenting my strategic plan, they are approving the budget, including what we call it a policy and budget statement. You know those budget votes. These things, uh, uh, Mr. Pitoras, on all my speeches I've referred them to, the, the pillars. The first four pillars, they are referring to issues that are domestic in terms of domestic strategic intelligence. And the last pillar, are referring to intel uh, foreign uh, matters. On the first pillar, Chair, there, is a, there was a, our security architecture as a country. It looks to the threats to the authority of the state. It has certain uh, elements in that document. Violent community protest, violent industrial action, violent in the transport sector, violent protests in the education sector, cyber security, activities of private security industry, and protective security. There is something very interesting, Chair, that you need to be able to note on the first one. There is always an adjective that has been used before community protests. Remember, protests are allowed. But could you see that there is always a qualification Violent, violent, violent. Because the Constitution allows people the right to express freely, they can march, petition, but immediately they do this qualification. It borders on matters of the law. Because I don't want, at a particular point in time, the men and women who work so hard to produce what we call NIE, be thought as if they were not conscious just of the issues of the Bill of Rights. The second matter, the threat was to the territorial integrity of the Republic, weak control, and the management of border security. Illegal migration, we're not saying migration is a problem, we're using also the right word, illegal, and anti-foreigner sentiment. These things of xenophobia, but discriminating people, then there is a threat to the well-being and safety of, of South Africans. Those are the issues of want. Your water, your food, your energy security, terrorism and extremism. Right now you have challenges in Mozambique. The problems of gangsterism and narcotics. And uh, then there is a threat to the economy of the republic. Corruption is the biggest matter that we raise here, illicit of mining of precious material, that was the intelligence report and assessment, theft of ferocious and non-ferocious material, including wildlife poaching. Those are the issues that we looked at. Those are the domestic matters. Then there are foreign matters, threats arising from abroad which are security challenges on foreign terrain, global context, and African continent. 
And uh, I thought I should be able to put in this thing. We never acted without a tool for certain things to be done. Because a number of things Mr. Pretorius will come in later on is to create an impression by these people who are here that some of these operations, they happened with no basis, either in law, either in police. Well, Mr. Pretorius, I agree with you. Corruption is our enemy. Our enemy, not only here, but even the whole world, and it must be fought, and it takes different form. And hence, the own creation of this uh, commission itself to deal with these issues. Uh, I thought I should raise these issues, uh, Your Excellency. Your, your, your mic, we have lost us. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh. You then go into some detail in paragraph 37. <clears throat> and you deal in more detail with the threats that you summarize in paragraph 36. Um, now, it may be that later on in your evidence, these threats are the context of certain projects uh, that I would like to put to you um, that emerges from the evidence and documentation that we have. But if we could go to, um, and a matter of interest uh, to certainly the evidence leaders is the statement in the second sentence of paragraph 37.1 where you say foreign intelligence services were aligned with negative domestic forces to destabilize the state's ability to govern the country. Um, the negative domestic source forces you talk about there, um, what are they? Political parties, non-governmental organizations? What are those forces? Well, uh, it's not a specific statement. But let's be on record. Not everybody is a friend to South Africa. We do have enemies. That's how intelligence works. We do have enemies, and if we live in a world and we think we don't have enemies, we're living in a different world. Even our own friends, you know there are those countries where we share certain things. These countries, they will never hesitate, even if they are a friend, on matters of pursuing their national interest, including even issues of dominance or economic advantage. We, you use intelligence to do these things. Some of these people, Chair, they live here, some they are declared here in South Africa. We know that this country has these uh, people, but in the COVID world, and counterintelligence. There are people that you'll never see and you must never see them. When you catch them, they are in trouble. But sometimes they do a slip up, you catch them, sometimes you don't catch them. Their duty for intelligence is to influence, to get information so that you can make decisions, you can have an advantage. And the covert world give you an advantage to recruit certain people of influence to advance a particular cause. Very alive that there are these other foreign intelligence and countries. South Africa is not a small country. Very strategic in terms of its location, in terms of its resources and others, and influence and leadership, both here at home and abroad. They must work on certain people so that these people knowingly and unknowingly, or wittingly or unwittingly, they must pursue their national objective. This is what is happening. And nobody, and I repeat, nobody is immune from being recruited. They can even recruit a minister. <laughs> they can recruit a president. They can recruit a judge. They can recruit a parliamentarian. You can recruit as long as you know 
what kind of information and influence you need. And that's how, Victorias, you should look at this thing. How will you actually get an advantage if really you don't know these people in the influence of power? You will find them anywhere. We'll come to the detail in due course, uh, Mr. Mkhlobo. But the concern is that under the absolute statement here, all manner of activities may be justified. Let's look at the statement that you make here. The foreign intelligence services were aligned with negative domestic forces to destabilize the state's ability to govern the country not to gain economic advantage for their own country, but clearly to destabilize the state's ability to govern the country. Let, now, that let, may let, seem legitimate, and my question is, what are those negative domestic forces? Are they trade unions? Are they when, when, NGOs? Let, let's help you. Let's help you, uh, firstly, understand the doctrine. It's not about matters of economy. I'm not referring in this sentence to the economy. On all matters of government. You know, countries change. Even today, there are countries and government that have collapsed because of operations of either intelligence services. Governments have been removed. It's not a hearsay. It's not a story. Governments have been installed. Leaders have been installed so that people can get an advantage on all matters. Immediately, your question started to say, I must name. Why would I actually start to divulge an information or a methodology or a body? Because that's what the law says. Where I'm starting to be able to call certain people as a threat. When you go to the projects, the counterintelligence activities, let, 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 let's cross the bridge that is there. Let's not actually try with this statement to insulate. I'm just giving you how the world of intelligence works. We do it ourselves. But I will never tell you <laughs> which country we want to have an advantage in the interest of national security or national objectives. Let's not single out certain sectors. They can be in any sector, but as long as they are becoming suspectable and they are becoming a target that they can wittingly or unwittingly, knowingly or unknowingly, become a target and they start to work for other people without knowing, others they know, it's money. You know, to sell information is money. Uh, that's why others, they come and say, hey, you know what? So-and-so is saying this about you. Or, or someone can actually even walk to your house and say, so-and-so is working. Though there are these uh, balancing checks that you need to do. But let's put it on record how our intelligence doctrine works. Foreign interferences by other countries is a matter we watch. That's why we even have, in intelligence, when I was there, there was a branch responsible for foreign intelligence. But because of relationships we do, do you know that in embassies all over the world, including them, this is the practice. They even send their own intelligence officers here. But they must, um, they must declare them so that they don't do things that undermine us. But in certain instances, they run their own covert work. They start working here, clandestinely, and then when we find them, we find them. Sometimes we don't find them. Then they call it an intelligence field. This is the environment we live. Well, let me put the question in a different way, if you're not uh, are willing to um, categorize these domestic forces. Are these domestic forces in the private sector, the public sector, or both? It can be any citizen. It can be any organization, both in the public and private sector. 
we are all vulnerable in one way or the other to be recruited, to be used, whether we know or we don't know, to push certain things or interests we don't know. By uh, Mr. Pretoria say, uh, I don't know, uh, we never had time to have tea or coffee, probably one day we'll have one. Maybe stronger. Um, we'll have one. You know, even business people, you know, business, there are serious issues of intelligence. Intelligence is information. Do you know there is a biggest problem even in private sector called issues of espionage? where companies want to have advantage. You know, it's a dog eat dog situation. They want to have a competitive advantage. Why will you put even IP, your intellectual property laws? Because we want to protect certain things. This is the reality we live in. Therefore, the answer, all of us, there is a possibility and a threat that we could be recruited. Either we wish to, or sometimes we don't wish to. I can't say who's a spy or not a spy, whether my wife or kids are spies or not. <laughs> no, understood. In paragraph 37.3, this may become important later, you deal with violent industrial action. And under that head, you talk of an assessment report which revealed that labor provides another platform to be used by foreign intelligence services to destabilize our economy and pursue their agendas. Now, if one is talking about violent industrial action, one is no doubt talking also about trade unions. Not so. Is that what you mean by labor? Well, um, we are narrowing it. Organized labor. We are, we are narrowing it if you say industry, uh, trade unions. Uh, if you speak about industrial action, it can be people who are organized or, un, or, or not organized, but they are employed in a particular sector or in industry. They start to get involved in certain things. Remember the architecture very clear, immediately exercising their right to petition and protest and deal with the issues at the workplace. Immediately they do the qualification, the adjective violent. It will be a matter of national security and it can't be ignored. I guess that your answer is that uh, your reference to labor in that sentence includes both uh, a trade union or um, activities where trade unions are involved and activities where no trade unions are involved. Singer is love of absent. Labor, by clear definition, I'm speaking about workers working wherever they are working. Yes. We, we, we can try to put the language somehow but I'm using labor the way the word labor is known, uh, without any specificity. Well, 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 you see, as I understand it, uh, quite often when uh, the word labor is used, uh, it uh, may be understood to include unions and sometimes not to include. I, I, I fully agree. Yes. As long as it's so broad, like you're saying it, Baba. Yes. It can't be in, in narrowed. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. Because I'm always cognizant. Yeah. Yes. What is our security architecture and framework? Yeah. It yeah. looks that this particular area, and it's a fact, mm. this particular area at a particular point in time, mm. you knew. Remember the problems that were there, the common cause, mm. and we look at the life. Mm. Oh, maybe let me use this way that I never used. You know, risk assessment is also having the grading. High risk, mm. low risk, and medium. Uh, low risk and medium, I've jumped medium, I should have included medium in there. But that's how we look. It's so scientific, but it's on the basis of data. We don't act without data. Mm. And the data, 
we have a process. It's called the ability to evaluate. You know, evaluation is an important issue. Well, there they use the word analyze. Sometimes the data will be accurate. Sometimes the data will be indicating is probably the probability. And sometimes the data is false. But later on, we'll deal with certain people who give us information and give us false information, or they give you a hybrid of information, lies and truth. <laughs> And uh, if you don't have the right instruments to do data verification. But I will not go to the yeah. methodology because the law doesn't allow me to go to methodology. But yes. evaluation and analysis is an important aspect in the doctrine. Right. And then in paragraph 37.4 to 37.6, you highlight several other threats, violence in the transport sector, violent protest in the education sector, and cyber security threats. I don't have any questions. The statements there are quite clear. And the next topic uh, would be funding of the operations of the SSA, which perhaps we can deal with after the break. Jeff. Yes, no, that's fine. Let's take the lunch break now. Let's, uh, uh, let's, let me see whether we agree to take less than an hour. And if so, shall we talk about 30 minutes or 45 minutes? Uh, 30 minutes agreed to. You, you are happy with 30 minutes, Mr. Pretorius? In your hands, Jeff. Okay. Uh, Maybe 14 minutes. 14. In your hands, Jeff. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, are, are, you, are you providing me lunch? <laughs> <laughs> we we, we, we are unfortunately not providing you with lunch, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mashobo. Okay. Or, or um, maybe I shouldn't say that because I don't know everything that happens. Uh, so it may well be that witnesses are provided. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> when the special arrangement, I'm sure you Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's. Uh, no, no, no. It's fine. My team will, yeah, will no, find no, that's, way. that's fine. We are at uh, 27 minutes to 2. Um, shall we say, let's resume at uh, 20 past two. Okay. We are jammed. <laughs>